Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes to the hillside where justice and mercy embrace. There the sun Depression for me is um, a deep dark hole. It is fighting demons inside your head. It's, it's fighting a battle 
on a daily basis with thoughts that you feel that you have no control over. I had the depression because no one could diagnose. I, I ended up having stage four endometriosis, which is a woman's condition. And I had that for seven years. I had five lots of surgery and no one could find out what was wrong with me. I did try and self-medicate with alcohol, which didn't help, it made things worse. Um, I was crying all the time. My daughter used to come and pick out tissues from the box and give them to me and say, here mum, it's going to be all right. I constantly was moping around and grumpy and angry and get, get frustrated at the children. And I didn't want to be that mother. I wanted to be a supportive, supportive, loving mother. And even though I love my children to bits, I felt that I was neglecting them with true love. It wasn't easy at all to try and seek help, but I knew I had to do it for my children. I wanted to be the best mother I possibly could and that's when I saw the ad in the paper. On the first day of this program we were introduced um, by two lovely ladies, Katie and Kerry, and who ran the program and they were full of life, absolutely full of life. They were laughing, smiling, made us even laugh and smile, and they made us feel so, so welcome. During this program, we show them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that they can turn their sadness into happiness. And we, they can see that there's a better life waiting for them. It was uplifting. It made me want to go every week. Uh, it was something to look forward to. And I actually felt that there is hope there. There is, there is really a light at the end of the tunnel. I've, I felt if I could follow this and stick to this, I felt enlightened. I understand that people out there are hurting and I understand that they need help. And to me, it's important that they come to the right place to get it and they can be well. I know they can be well. I've seen that happen over and over again. I did used to believe in God, but I had some childhood experiences that turned me away from um, the God as such. For me, it was quite hard to pray in the beginning because I hadn't done this for years. And um, But I joined in and I thought, I really need to think this through and, and, and take this on board. And I did, and by doing this and praying with, with Katie and Kerry, it actually worked. I, I, I felt better in myself. I felt that there is a presence out there, and it made me realise that there is a God in this world. Let's make no mistake about this. Jesus is really the healer. He's the one that offers help and healing. And we like to follow in his footsteps. He actually practically helped people and he showed them what it was that he could do to help them, and then they followed him. I feel that you know this course has helped me so much, not only for the uh, mental side of things, but also to, to have God in my life and to realize that he has always been here and that I, I know that he'll always be in my life and he'll be beside me, and it's a journey that I'm going to continue for the rest of my life. Adventist Health are very passionate about helping people too. And they saw a need in our communities. They've seen this opportunity to be able to use this program and they have backed it. It's delightful that ADRA have got on board with this program. They also see the value in it and they've believed that it can tremendously help people too. And their involvement is critical to bringing the program within the financial reach of New Zealanders, the average New Zealander. ADRA believes this program can make a difference. The Depression and Anxiety Program was created to help and educate communities about making positive, healthy change. ADRA saw how important this is for New Zealanders. 
partnering with the Adventist Health Ministry and the Church, we now provide this program to the community for a fraction of the cost, making it affordable for everyone. Because of their involvement, we've been able to give this to the communities at a much more reasonable rate. I feel that the people that have created this depression and anxiety program are, are amazing and I just only wish that all people who are suffering from anxiety and depression could take this course. It, it changed my life and I know that it can change theirs. Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Hi, we are dry and happy Sabbath. So I am very excited to do Sabbath school with you all this morning. And before we get into the word, I would just love to pray with you all before we begin, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the ability to come together uh, virtually and in person uh, to just learn more about your um, purpose and intention uh, with each and every one of us, God. Uh, there is a a plan that you have um, for us as a community to um, exist and grow um, in our existence, um, not only in our relationship with you, but in the surrounding community uh, as well. And God, we just pray that as we go through this word, uh, as we uh, highlight uh, just some interesting and beautiful messages uh, from uh, your laws, God, we just pray that uh, we are in tune with you, that our hearts and our ears are open to the message that you want us to receive. In God's name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the Sabbath school for this week uh, touched on a book that I do not think we preach on very often. Um, and this is uh, the book of Deuteronomy. And I think normally when I've heard this book referenced. Um, it's referenced in uh, like snippets, like passages, right? So someone will take a passage or a piece of scripture out of Deuteronomy um, and use it to, you know, enhance um, a point or, uh, you know, a message. Uh, however, Deuteronomy is very packed um, with, with context and packed with... Um, just beautiful sermon pieces um, from Moses to God's people. And I, I think looking at it as a collective really adds to um, its, its value and its, and its message from God to his people at this time and for them to teach future generations. So this is, this is a message for specific people in a very specific context, but it's a message that is supposed to live within the people, right? Which means it travels and it grows and it magnifies as the people, um, you know, bring uh, uh, their their wisdom from um, following God, right? Um, and just what they have learned from having a relationship with God and how to treat other people, right? So these are the things that, you know, are they're being called to carry on. Uh, and in Deuteronomy, um, chapter four, there is so much that we can touch on, right? And we don't have time to touch on everything. But to start us off, I think that would be uh, helpful to add just a reflection question, right? So this is just for you. Um, and the reflection question is, what is a rule or a guideline, right, that you are grateful for? And whatever context you're thinking of right now when I say that. Um, let that be the one uh, that you resonate on. Go um, into Deuteronomy chapter 4. Um, I think it's helpful to to see this book as 
really packaging the most, the most, right, important values uh, from God to humanity um, to live by. And at this time, right, it is important that we are uh, aware and intuitive to the context of um, these this community struggle, right? The community that Moses is is living with, is working with, is ministering to, right? Um, they have had a very unique um, experience, and this is this is kind of unpackaging. Uh, this is kind of packaging, right? Uh, everything that they've gone through and what that means for moving forward. So it's it's like um, setting a vision, right? So I. To do a quick snapshot, our board went through moving faith forward and and the beginning of the series started off with, um, you know, us addressing our context, right, which which is chaotic, right? We we're we come from a chaotic space of, you know, leadership moving around of, um, you know, demographics changing of periods of, you know, a, a, a lot of um, a lot of. Uh, you know, excess, right, that's involved in, in church community to sometimes moments of feeling like there's scarcity in church community. And, wh- and what does that mean, right? What does that mean for moving forward? What can we, what can we t- take by accepting, you know, that there are things that have happened and yet God is still calling us, right, for a vision to move forward. And Deuteronomy is doing that, right? Moses is doing that in this book. Um, so in Deuteronomy chapter four, if you want to flip there, turn there, um, we are hearing Moses witness to younger generations, right? And, and he's sharing contextual stories. He's sharing history and, and, and packaging that the history that their, um, lineage has gone through, right? Their parents, their grandparents, um, of, of, their, um, you know, elders that came before them, um, they went through very difficult moments with God, right? For forgetting almost their, their call, right? And the vision of their, of their existence, right? That God had, God had, had, had delivered them, had, had shown them so much of himself, right? Had shown them so much of himself with the intention of, having them share right that experience with the world right by by being so close to god and knowing him so intimately knowing his 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 true acts of mercy and 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 um grace on a people that had um just really gone all over the place um and had really struggled to stay like consistent with God. God is 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 still um, working with this people and their generations to come, right? So he's still um, making efforts and through Moses, um, reminding them of this bigger vision that uh, they're they're um, not just their uh, lineage from past, but their future generations moving. They have uh, a purpose and God wants um, them to really understand what that means. So in Deuteronomy 4, Moses is delivering these passionate, very passionate sermons um, to the people. And he's bringing them right into God's uh, God's kind of calling out of where things had um where things had kind of gone haywire in the past. And um, he does not want them to fall into the same uh, kind of misguidedness. Um, and so when we look at uh, Deuteronomy 4, um, the beginning part of the chapter, um, it's saying that in the very first, in the very first verse, right, it's saying that the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe that you may live and go in and um, possess the land which the Lord God of your father is giving you, right? You shall not add to the word which I command you or take from it um, so that you can keep the commandments, right? Um, and and this is interesting 
I think verse two is, is so valuable in um, the concept of the commandments, right? Because throughout time, uh, humanity shows that it wants to make edits, right? It wants to um, continually critique and continually like um, rewrite and uh, re-explain uh, messages, right? Just in general, but to take the commandments, um, when we look at what this is referring to, right? When we uh, look at the 10 commandments and what they are, right? We have the first four are, I'm packaging it. The first four are our relationship with God, right? the next the next six are our relationship with other people right so we have the most important dynamics of our calling as a people are one our relationship with god and um two our relationship with others these are the most valuable things right in in our community as christians these are what set us apart right so this is not um you know, this is, this is actually not what we find, right? Often in society, sometimes the, 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 the governing, the governing laws that we kind of exist by, um, don't always follow this. And I think we can see in communities, um, there are communities when they have existed in, uh, a manner that is, untrustworthy right um that uh does have you know high crime that does have um a uh disrespect of like property right we see what those things do in creating an environment that that not just adds trauma to individuals um experiencing uh just living life, right? But but it adds a sense of disunity, right? Among neighbors, right? Disunity among this kind of like where we live is not where we feel safe, right? Or or where we're existing is 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 not where we are are thriving. And I think that this is this is very apparent um we see this packed right in our spiritual community, but this is very apparent, right? In and outside of um, the Christian community, when these things are a part of um, the community, it it adds a huge amount of I cannot express the amount of ways that it affects um, uh, individuals. I, the the amount of trauma and the depth of how trauma affects right? Individuals, when they're going through these things, right? Um, when they don't have a, uh, a safe home life, when there is a disconnect between um, parental figures and, and children, and there's not a healthy dynamic there, when there is um, uh, threats on lives, and you see individuals being taken, right, in your neighborhood, um, and you see a, a, a lack of trusting, right? So, um, uh, deceit and lying and, um, not respecting other people's property. It is, it is so damaging, um, to us as people. And I think it's amazing that with, with the science we have now on a human existence and, um, how our, how our bodies react, um, to trauma. It is amazing that, our Ten Commandments in Scripture address things that self-regulate us, right? By by grounding us in our relationship with God, we are able to um, ground ourselves despite what's happening around us, despite influences happening around us, right? And then um, it calls on this safe and beautiful uh, picture of community and what it means to interact with others and what to stay away from because of how much damage it adds, right? We know how much damage it adds now. And I think we know to a deeper understanding um, and 
at that time, you know, we don't know what kind of knowledge they had on how things like this affected individuals. But I think it's just amazing when we look at um, God's calling on us, really the beauty in these laws and what they are instilling in communities is is something that I don't, how, how would you, how would anyone not want that, right? How would anyone not want, um, you know, a place where they would feel safe, where they would trust um, their community, where um, people wouldn't covet, right? There wouldn't be any kind of, um, any kind of resentment, right? For someone else having something or for um, um, wanting something uh, you, you don't have and creating resentment towards a person, right? Just for that mere fact. Um, and as we continue right through the Sabbath school, there's so many things that it, it touches on in, in the way that uh, we kind of misunderstand um, sometimes the value right, of what these laws are actually giving, uh, giving our community. And so in looking at what we have here, right, um, if you read through this study already, wonderful. If not, um, there is uh, one piece um, that I think would be wonderful to highlight because obviously we don't have time to go through everything. Um, but there's a section in the study where um, it's talking about um, Deuteronomy 4, um, verse 6. And in Deuteronomy 4, verse 6, um, it's referencing um, for God's people to be careful to observe, right, the law. For this is your wisdom and your understanding uh, in the sight of the people who will hear, right? So this is, this is already forecasting that, that your wisdom is going to come and be, and be present in awareness of individuals who will encounter you and hear these commandments and really stand in awe at what a great nation, right? In um, the end of verse six, surely, this is what they'll say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding nation. Wise and understanding. And it's, I love how in the lesson it highlights um, that it's not the laws, right? It's, it's how following the laws develops us as individuals to be something so unique and so different um, from how the world would kind of create us to be, right? If we didn't have God's guidance, right? We would we would have very different goals. We would have very different ambitions um, and we would have very different cares, right? I think it's beautiful that it's, that, that it talks about your wisdom and understanding, right? from as a, as a characteristic of people right so when you think of um when you think of those laws right or got our rules that you find that you're grateful for um i almost want to guarantee that that gratefulness is sourced from probably wisdom that you gained um from that law right or from that rule um that has been uh, kind of um, adopted into your life, right? So the gratitude that comes out of it, right, is is you're experiencing the 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 wisdom and 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 understanding that comes with you know upholding something that's good for you, right? And that is what the commandments offer, right? God's people, um, and. It is, it is so interesting when we think about um, what we as a community offer um, to others, right? When we are occupying spaces where we are interacting with individuals, right? Um, are we really thinking about, you know, not 
not not so much um not so much the things that make us different right um because i think sometimes we get caught up in very small details um that you know set us apart from others that are maybe you maybe more like cultural um you know like uh <laughs> if i want to be like funny here like things that we eat right as a church there are types of things we eat which is insane to me that you can go um you can travel around to different places and there people will understand what you mean by fried chick or <laughs> um i'm trying to think of veggie meats like uh linkets right and that's something that is very unique to us and sometimes we we go for those things when we're explaining like you know our differences sometimes we go to um you know our our history as a church um and that's a very cultural piece as well right um the 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 great disappointment and 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 what that adds to our motivators right as as people however we are called to share these these statutes right these 10 commandments right this is this is the piece that we are called to share so when people you know are 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 meeting us and and encountering us those are the pieces that stand out right those are the pieces that that bring christ like into community um in a very universal way right in a very beautiful and um almost all accepting way because they are commandments to benefit everyone right they are commandments to really take care of the multitude of people together and this is so important as a church when we're when we're thinking and and going through sabbath schools right and we're going through independent study right and we're thinking of our our calling right um what is our vision right moving forward i think sometimes um we can kind of want something to sound new maybe or to sound um innovative or to um appear like you know we're doing something different um and the the reality is is that ministry happens on the foundation right of the ten commandments um and understanding you know contextually what those ten commandments actually mean right because sometimes uh we can kind of add in our own definitions <laughs> um for so for example right um remember the sabbath day to keep it holy right we know that um the the Israelites added a lot of their rules um, for for what they believed would uh, create a holy day, right? And and the the premise though of what Moses is sharing um, is around focusing on these laws and not not taking away and not adding to them, um, which obviously was you know, a, a strong message in this sermon piece, but right, they still struggled with it throughout their history and future generations, right? It was still something that was, you know, difficult to um, go by. And that's, you know, the human, that's the human struggle, right? But when we, when we look back at the bigger scope um, of what's happening in this text and what we're given, I think there is, there is so much so much room for us to expand our our idea of what it means to bring ministry um to everyone what it means to bring ministry to community right if we are existing in a way that upholds the commandments right um where you know we are we are loving god um with everything that we have right this is so with everything right is is having no one nothing else come before god right and everything god is first 
um, and not creating any, any um, idol, right, that you would go to and kind of seek maybe wisdom or guidance from. Um, I think this is very, uh, very applicable with, um, you know, individuals and people. Uh, sometimes we can kind of uphold, um, you know, someone in, in the spotlight and anything they say, you know, we would, we would go to them first, right? Um, and it's not to say that there aren't amazing leaders, uh, you know, in, in the public eye who do have very quality um, messages, but it's to understand that we cannot receive those, right, without having God as our everything, right, without having God as the basis for us um, going into those conversations and those spaces with wisdom and understanding. Um, and uh, when we when we look at these, I think I get so excited because there is um there is such a universal message uh in deuteronomy right and i think that sometimes it's hard to grasp because not everyone talks about these texts um as this this encouraging um encouraging piece but it really is um it really is everything that we that we are and we strive to be um as a community is is in this packaging is in you know Moses's um sermon to um these individuals who really you know are struggling with their identity and what it means um to follow God so I just encourage you um to continue in this study and uh as you look at um as you read through Deuteronomy um, but you reflect on the Ten Commandments. Um, I think it is it is so beneficial to take time and reflect on why these Ten Commandments are so um, influential, right, in our community, in our existence, right? What does it look like to uphold them? What does it look like when a family upholds them, when a community upholds them, when a neighborhood upholds them, right? Um, what does it look like when pieces are missing, right? What does it look like um, when um, not all of these are there and what parts of us, you know, hurt because of that, right? And then that creates this, this gratitude and closeness with God because we see, right? We see why we have them. We see their purpose for us and their benefit for us. Um, so I just want to encourage you all uh, in study um, I am sending prayers for you always and sorry if my voice is, uh, <laughs> my voice is getting a little raspy. It's been a long week of talking. So I am, um, just excited to spend Sabbath with you all and I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. Oh Jesus, we turn our eyes to you